hello guys welcome back to my channel today if this is your first time stopping by my channel you're absolutely welcome and uh, i'm excited to have you here and if you're a returning subscriber thank you guys for stopping by once again for yet another video thank you guys all together anyways uh, my name is onyeka i'm a nigerian youtuber based in canada i make videos talking about my life experiences here in canada nothing more so please guys subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it please subscribe thank you and when you do subscribe make sure you click on the bell like button so that you get notified for every video that i post and you will not miss any of my content at all so guys in my previous videos um i asked you guys to suggest what you like me to film next on my channel and this topic was um you know one of the most highly requested topics in my comment section and in my dms so i decided to film this video for you guys today so without further ado let's get right into the video So before I start this video, I just want to put out a disclaimer that I am not a licensed agent. I am just sharing tips for you guys based off of my experience and from the little research that I do. I'm not a licensed agent, please. Okay, don't come for me. Back to the video. So um, working while studying is um, one of the major advantages for choosing Canada as a country of study for your education. You're usually allowed to work with your study permit that's the amazing thing about it so in today's video i'm just going to give you guys some tips you need to know as an international student in canada so in order for you to be able to work and study here in canada you must first be admitted into a designated learning institution and and we're just going to be calling it dlis um, so basically DLIs, they're kind of like institutions which have been approved by the provincial or territorial government to host international students. Yes, that's it in a nutshell. And each school, they have their unique DLI numbers. Anyways, I'm going to leave a link in my description box to a link to designated learning institutions. So if you're applying to a school in Canada, make sure that your school is a designated learning institution so that after graduation, you'll be able to apply for a postgraduate working permit. So after getting your admission, you will then need to apply for a study visa and obviously you will need your acceptance letter from your school to apply for your study visa. And um, if approved, you'll be able to work up to 20 hours per week, nothing more, but you can go less. So with your study permit, you're entitled to work up to 20 hours um, per week and full time during um, school holidays. So when your school is on break, you can work all day, every day. But when school starts, you're going back to working just 20 hours per week. I find for the fact that you're able to work and study um, as a good thing because it kind of like helps you build your like your professional connections. You know, you get to meet and work with people. You also get to have the Canadian work experience, if you ask me. Uh, this will go a long way post-graduation because employers they usually want you to have the Canadian work experience if you're able to secure a job while you're studying that would help you you know get integrated into the system faster like me me I wasn't able to work I wish I did but uh, my program was full-time and very intense so I had plans to work but I couldn't because it was just so overwhelming and I had to just focus on my studies I was like school now work and wait so that was it. So with your study permit, you can work off campus for any employer um, for your 20 hours per week. You can also work on campus for 20 hours per week, either as a research assistant or a teaching assistant or any admin rules you can get. So um, you also need to note that even if you plan to support yourself um, by working while schooling, when you're applying for your study permit, you need to be able to prove that you can still support yourself in school even without working so you need to show that you have plenty of money in your account when you're applying for your research when you land in canada at the immigration you get um your study permit is this like golden brownish paper and on that paper it states your status in the country and then it states your that you're eligible to work for 20 hours i feel like i've been saying that a lot it states that you, you need to work for that amount of hours and the conditions of your employment and then with that document you you will need to apply for a social insurance number 
aka sin number um, so your sin number basically it's a nine digit number um that you're gonna get if you apply for it which you will need um the government will be able to identify you with that number you're gonna need it for work you're gonna need it for um like applying for your pr and so many things and it's also a very sensitive information guys so you have to keep that number safe like nobody should see it unless your employer and typically sin number is one of the first things you do when you get to canada you can do it right um i heard you can do it right in the airport but i did mine like um two days later or something i think i didn't know that so i'm letting you know um you can get your sin number from service canada near you you also need to note that you cannot start working until your program officially starts um let's say your program is going to start in the next three months maybe you arrived early um i hear that you can't start working till your program starts so you have to do them simultaneously or concurrently and then if your program requires you to um, do a practicum placement a practicum is kind of like the same thing as an internship i was required to do a practicum so my program was for one year and um I had classes from September 2018 till April 2019 and um, I had my practicum from May 2019 till August 2019 and then I graduated in October. So yeah, if your program requires you to do a practicum placement, you will need to apply for a co-op work permit and um, I remember the, like when I was applying for my visa like two years ago, they asked me if I was going to do a practicum. I don't even think I understood what that meant and that's why I said yes. But now I understand what it means. So I'm going to explain it to you. So you're going to apply for a co-op work permit. I did that. And um, tip, you need to apply for that early because I didn't get my co-op work permit approved on time. So my practicum was delayed for about three weeks before I could start. And then that one is a video for another day on how to get your co-op work permit. It's kind of like a similar application process for getting your postgraduate work permit. While looking for a job as a student, the kind of jobs you most find are minimum wage jobs, but some people are lucky enough to get jobs that pay above minimum wage, which is great. And then um, minimum wage jobs are somewhere between like $12 to like $14 before tax. And um, you're required to pay your tax and it's not funny. On campus, um, the most common jobs you can find are usually like admin jobs, research assistant, teaching assistant, but I feel like you need to have like some sort of level of knowledge to get those kind of jobs. I have to interview for it, obviously. And then outside of campus, um, most students work in like retail shops, in the malls, at, like as um, customer service agents and so on, just to make ends meet. Uh, those are the kind of jobs you find, typically find outside of campus. but some people are quite lucky to find like good jobs that um, are not menial jobs and then after graduation you then need to apply for your postgraduate work permit i made a video a few months ago which i'm going to link up here and um, you guys be sure to check that video out um i talked about my process and how you can get yours so that's it for this video it's not long it's just straightforward yeah you can work while you study but um a lot of people usually ask me this question in my messages or dms that um can the job they get while schooling can help pay for their tuition well if you do the calculation like i don't think it can pay for the entire tuition i mean it can support you but i don't think it can pay for the entire thing i say this because let's assume your job is minimum wage you earn about 14 dollars an hour and you get to work 20 hours a week so let's say 14 times 20 and you deduct like 13 percent from that um which is i don't know maybe i'll put the maths on the screen which is not enough and then if you multiply that a semester is about four months if you multiply how much you get let's say you make like a thousand dollars a month and then times four that's four thousand in four months um your rent is going to be like 500 or 600 if you're sharing houses with people and then you're going to pay for your food and buy some little things here and there so it, it's in my personal opinion i don't think it can be for your entire tuition it can only support you on your day-to-day -day life so yeah that's it for this video guys i'm just going to end it here i don't want to keep you guys here for longer than you planned for so if you did enjoy this video please guys give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel it's absolutely free please subscribe to my channel and follow me on my instagram and if you have more questions 
that you're not comfortable asking in the just in the like comment section please send me an email and i will be sure to respond in time and yeah guys so that is for this video thank you guys for watching and um stay safe and stay blessed i'll see you guys in my next video bye